So I received my COVID-19 vaccination back in January of 2021. And surprisingly to say, I still ended up testing positive for COVID-19. So for those of you who are unaware of what the vaccine actually does or what it actually covers, there's generally three types of vaccination. The Pfizer vaccination, the Moderna vaccination, as well as the Johnson & Johnson. The Pfizer vaccination covers about 95% of coverage of COVID-19, while the Moderna covers about 94.1%. So obviously that gives you about a 5% risk of actually developing COVID-19. Now again, just like with any type of shot, flu shot, or I'm just thinking flu shot primarily, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not gonna be 100% guaranteed to not get the flu. Again, with the COVID-19 vaccination, we have a 5% chance of contracting the vaccination, which I unfortunately ended up getting, despite the fact that I wore a mask at my patient's house and then still ended up getting it. Now, the symptoms are likely to be less, right? We all remember the, the fiasco of what happened last year where people were developing like pulmonary issues where they can't breathe, they're feeling shortness of breath, and they kind of feel like there's a, there's a heavy elephant uh, sitting on their chest. And I can't really imagine what that feels like. So fortunately for me, I actually did not experience uh, significant shortness of breath. Now, I did experience some levels of shortness of breath where it might have been mostly in my head where I felt like because of the fact that I, I feel like I can't breathe, therefore my anxiety kind of kicked in, making me feel like I had shortness of breath symptoms. But in fact, I didn't really have that. Um, I do have one of those pulse oximeter uh, readings where I would basically, if I did feel like I was shortness, I was experiencing short of, shortness of breath, I would basically make sure to check my oxygen and sure enough, 95%, obviously 95% initially, but it would rise up to like 97, 98, 99% relatively quickly. Now, the only symptom that I actually ended up experiencing that in my opinion was considered a big deal was the fact that I lost my sense of smell. Now, if you look at the bush behind me, there is a bush of flowers where normally, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know what the flowers are. It's like a purple flower that smells really, really good, really, really sweet. And that's the first time I noticed that I couldn't smell because due to the fact that I had cut some just to put inside the house couldn't really smell it. I'm like, this is unfortunate. And the funny thing as well is the fact that I have a litter box sitting in my office room. And I guess you would say that I should have smelled that, right? But I, I just assumed that I got used to this, the smell of cat litter. And for those of you who do have cats, you guys know what cat litter smells like. And at some point you just get accustomed and get used to it. So I know there's a big controversy with this whole vaccination thing. So I'm generally curious to see, like, have you guys got your vaccination yet? And, and if so, or if not, tell me, what is it that's still holding you back from getting the vaccination? Because in my opinion, I believe that because I got the vaccine, it really, really helped minimize some of the other symptoms that's really associated with COVID-19. And I wanna tell you the other story about the experience that I had with COVID-19 and how I felt so supportive from my local government. And so let's actually talk about what type of treatments or services that I received from the local Department of Health here in Seattle, uh, particularly in the King County region. When you get COVID-19, there is a, requ a requirement where you're supposed to basically be in quarantine for two weeks inside the house. And the fact that I'm making this video today is actually the end of my quarantine episode. So yay, I'm still here, I'm still alive, and I'm still breathing. The first thing that's gonna happen when you test positive for COVID-19 is that you're gonna receive a call from your local Department of Health. And they're basically gonna break it down as far as like, these are some of the things that you're gonna be experiencing, and these are some of the recommendations that we recommend you do. But they also go into details as far as like what kind of assistance you may need at this point. Again, you're quarantined for two weeks. You may be out of work for two weeks because of the fact that you're, again, staying at home, right? And if, if you're not fortunate enough to be able to work from home, you're kind of stuck basically jobless. So they did ask me at first, will I need assistance with paying my rent or paying my mortgage? And I said, you know what? No, because of the fact that I'm still using my sick leave, I'm using some of my PTO, and that was kind of a nice benefit for those of us who are lucky enough to still have a PTO or still have some sick time benefit. And the next thing that they're gonna ask you is, do you need any assistance with groceries or food? Now, initially I said no, but I said, you know what? Let's take it, let's why not? Because I am running a little bit low on food. I'm just, I'm just so used to going grocery shopping every two or three days that the fact that I still had some groceries at home, but I realized I'm gonna be quarantined for two weeks, might as well go ahead and accept some of the grocery benefits. And it was really nice because they basically ask you things like, you know, what is your ethnicity? What is your race? That way, I guess they, they try to detail your, your food experience 
to basically match what you're normally used to accustomed to eating. They ask you obviously if you have any allergies and any type of other things that you may be like wanting. And I said, you know, I generally like to eat healthy foods and that's what I said. So anyways, check out the video that I recorded here where they actually did drop off the food in my front door. So before we had say if we deliver our food, we were playing a little bit of a guessing game, trying to think what would they bring us as far as what type of food that's gonna last us for a week, right? So we were pleasantly surprised to see that they actually did bring us quite a bit of food. So let's go ahead and see what the uh, local government actually provided us as far as food. All right, let's see what Safeway brought us. Look at all of this groceries, wow. Let's go ahead and see exactly what they brought us. Let's open it up. Okay. Peanut butter, ham sandwich, cheese for a quesadilla. Mm-hmm. Ooh, another bag. Dang. Okay. Okay. Butter. Something I'm not necessarily gonna use, but butter's cool. And a nice 18 pack of eggs. So if you look in the bag, there's actually more food here. Some apple juice, uh, looks like canned soup, garlic, uh, tortilla. Uh, let's see, fried, not fried chicken, just chicken breast. Uh, some salad mix with like spinach. Some veggies for basically, what is this? Romaine, so like romaine lettuce, carrots, broccoli crowns, uh, ginger root. What else? Mashed potatoes, apples, tomatoes, bananas, lemons, more tomatoes back there. This is actually really, really cool. Granny Smith apples, uh, more apples, fruits, and basically some mini peppers. Oh, I see a, uh, a box of strawberries right there as well. They give us two, uh, two gallons of water. Uh, toilet paper, obviously gotta have toilet paper, bathroom tissue, and a nice big box, nice big bag of russet potatoes. So if you take a look here, they actually gave us an itemized list of all the foods that they have provided for us. And one thing to mention is that they did not really ask us what specifically we wanted. So, but they did ask us for our ethnicity and our race. So Asian and Mexican. So I'm not really too sure if that had anything to do with um, factoring what type of foods they were gonna give us. But if you take a look at the amount that it costs, it costs about $150 for pretty much everything. And this is just a really, really cool service. If you take a look at it, again, they spent about $150 for both of us for two weeks. Now, some of the food I'm not gonna eat, but it's nice. Again, they didn't really ask me what I specifically wanted, but they did just bring the, the, the basic fruits, the basic vegetables, milk, and fun again, toilet paper, obviously you gotta have toilet paper, right? And so that was a really, really nice service to have. And just due to the fact that this was not exactly what I was expecting, uh, regarding uh, services and, and uh, assistance. But this is really nice to know that for those of you who do end up developing COVID-19, you know, knock on wood that you don't, you don't develop COVID-19, these are some of the nice services and benefits that you end up getting from hopefully your local government. And I was taking a brief look at, I know Washington does this, especially because I live in Washington, but I know California also provides some of these services as well. If you look at their website, they do detail things like food services, rent assistance, and anything else that you may need during your time that you have COVID-19. And so again, I know it's been about a year, we'll say a year and like two months, three months since we've, let, we've all experienced COVID-19. And my recommendation for anyone, again, doesn't matter what your stance is, hopefully this is not, this doesn't become political, is that everyone get vaccinated. Recently, just uh, May 13th, uh, 2021, the CDC just recently sent out a new requirement regarding masks. And I am honestly really surprised about this, but it actually does make sense. So for those of you who are vaccinated, your friends, your families, or your, your, your local community of people who are vaccinated, we no longer have to require wearing masks in public. Obviously, depending on you know what type of business you're going to, what type of establishment you're going to, they may still require you to wear a mask, but between your local, small community, small clique, they recommend, you know what, don't need to wear a mask anymore as long as everyone around you is vaccinated. So this is why I highly, highly recommend everyone getting vaccinated because the fact that I felt like I'm vaccinated, but my patient who didn't, who gave me COVID-19 was not vaccinated, this is what happens, right? You still have a 5% chance. So you're telling me there's a chance.
of still developing COVID-19 symptoms. Granted, my symptoms weren't as severe as, let's say, some of the other people who have had COVID-19 and not being vaccinated. It's still just, again, a protective measure for me, protective measure for you, and just anybody else out there who may still be at risk of developing uh, COVID-19. And just, again, before I end this episode, a sad little story is that my patient did end up passing away, unfortunately, from his um, experience with COVID-19. And it just, it just it sucks, right? I was relatively close to my patient. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, these things do happen. And it's just, it's just part of life, right? It's a part of life. So, again, I want to hear from the people who, who don't want to get vaccinated. Like, what is it? about the vaccination that really scares you. I mean, deep down, I know there are a lot of conspiracies out there, rather like there's 5G, like, in, you know, it might cause some 5G, like 5G causes COVID-19 or like the whole Bill Gates thing with microchipping and the vaccination. But I mean, realistically, do you really honestly believe in that? And I'm, I'm just curious, like, what is it about it that you do not want the vaccination? I mean, you're protecting yourself from these horrible, horrible virus. And if you get, again, if you're looking back at the previous years of like for example polio vaccination measles mumps we are basically inoculated ourselves from these deadly diseases and granted polio still does exist exist at a very 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 minimal rate because i've still ended up treating some patients who ended up developing uh, the polio disease but granted obviously this was like 60 70 years ago not a fun disease to have so this is why you want to get vac vaccinated from basically <laughs> any type of disease disease that can cause serious harm to your body so again thanks to everybody for watching and i really want to hear what your thoughts are regarding the covid19 as well as the vaccination and whether or not you would receive the vaccination and if you for those of you who are vaccinated right we're one step closer one step closer to almost achieving our normal life again right because we all remember what normal life looks like hopefully you don't you didn't forget it right just one year felt like a lifetime so thanks for watching everybody stay safe out there and i would really appreciate it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button i'll see you guys in my next video take care